Welcome everyone to this afternoon's program featuring the Pasadena Community Foundation and Jennifer Duvall, the CEO of the Pasadena Community Foundation, will be talking about their community support throughout the pandemic. The Pasadena Community Foundation has been a huge supporter throughout this pandemic and today in the news was something else that they have helped with with the Equitable Vaccination Program, Pasadena Community Foundation and Planned Parenthood Pasadena and San Gabriel Valley are assisting with vaccines to underserve Pasadena populations quickly, efficiently and equitable. So they started as soon as we were hit with the um, pandemic and they are continuing today, one year past the start of the pandemic. So we're um, very, very appreciative of them. Um, Jennifer Duvall joined the Pasadena Community Foundation in December 2002 and has served as the president and CEO for the past 18 years. She works with individuals, families, and local groups to establish charitable funds and create effective grant making programs. Under her leadership, Pasadena's Hometown Foundation has grown substantially from 16 million to over 130 million in charitable assets, now managing over 350 charitable funds. Jennifer graduated from Stanford University as a human biology major. She began her career with Los Angeles-based Gray Advertising, working on healthcare accounts. After stints in both for the profit and nonprofit world of hospitals, she joined Holland Back Home, a retirement community in East LA where she worked for 12 years. She is particularly proud of her role in creating a special fund to enable very low income seniors to the, enter the home with a guarantee of life care. She currently serves on the board of the local private foundations. She's a member of Pasadena Rotary an immediate president of the Twilight, immediate past president of the Twilight Club. She also served as director and past board chair of the Estate Planning Council of San, San Gabriel Valley and on the board of Episcopal Communities and Services. She is married to Matt Duvall and she's a proud mother of two adult children. So it is my pleasure and the pleasure of the Pasadena Public Library to um, welcome Jennifer Duvall to our One City, One Story 2010 program. We are honoring again our book, Tattoos on the Heart by Father Greg Boyle. So welcome and thank you for attending today. Jennifer. Great, thank you everyone. Um, happy to be here and I'm gonna I'm going to be screen sharing three different screens, so bear with me during the transitions, but I'm going to start um, here at the origins of PCF. So um, can all of you see that uh, first screen? Um, I'm assuming that you can see it because I can't see you any longer. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. You're not, okay, that's what no. I wanted to make. You're not seeing it, so why is that? Apologize, little technology glitch here. Um, try again. There we go. Great, wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna um, start by, uh, thank you very much for having me this evening. Um, I'm gonna just, today walk you through a little bit about the history of the foundation, some of the work that we do in the local community, um, how that work gets funded, and then we'll have time for, for, for questions. Uh, so the Pasadena Community Foundation was founded in 1953. Um, this is a picture of the YWCA, back one of our early grantees back in the 50s. That building is um, sadly now boarded up. It's a Julia Morgan designed building and the city owns it and they're trying to decide the best possible use for it. But back in the day, it was a community center and that's one of them um, and an early grantee of the foundation. Uh, 
The Pasadena Foundation, as we were then known, was founded by Lewis and Marion Webb. They're pictured here. Um, this is a picture that was taken in 1939, but they created the Pasadena Foundation in December of 1953, and they created it with a pledge of their estate as a future gift. So um, Mr. Webb was uh, had made his fortune through, um, he had come from the East Coast and was an engineer and built power plants up and down the West Coast and eventually settled in Pasadena and got into the real estate world. He was a rather frugal man. He ate at Beatles cafeteria every day um, and he drove an old car. Um, back in the day when you had stocks and bonds, you actually owned the certificates, you actually held the certificates. And um, the, the story is that he was didn't want to pay for a safe deposit box at the bank. So he hid his stock and bond certificates under his dining room carpet. On, he had a home on Mountain Street in Pasadena. And I heard these stories because when I first came to the foundation, I was able to connect, the Webbs had both passed away, but I was able to co connect with Mrs. Webb's hairdresser and her housekeeper. And so they told me lots of stories about the Webbs, which was fun to hear. Um, Lewis Webb formed the foundation and he recruited sort of some very prominent citizens in Pasadena to the early founding board. Um, one of those early four board members was Cecil Gamble. He was the first board chair in 1954 of the Gamble House and Procter and & Gamble. And um, a couple decades later, his son, Jim Gamble, also joined our board in 1978. So it was sort of a father-son um, succession plan there. Um, Another board, another early founding board member and sort of another father-son uh, succession plan. Um, so W.H. Hubbard was the founder of Citizens Commercial Trust and Savings Bank in 1912, now known as Citizens Business Bank. Uh, his son, M. Villas Hubbard, succeeded his father at the bank and served on the founding board of the Pasadena Foundation. And then he was succeeded both at the bank and at the foundation by his son, who's pictured here, Robert, uh, and his wife, that's his wife, Jean. So that was sort of another um, succession, father-son succession. There was a woman on the founding board, Neva Prisk Paddock. She was of the, um, the Prisk family, was the, was the prominent newspaper family who owned the Pasadena Star News. She married a uh, rather famous gentleman by the name of Charlie Paddock. He was a Olympian. I think he was called the world's fastest runner at one point in time. He also joined the family's newspaper business. And then there was Lee DeBridge, who was the president of Caltech at the time. He was also an early board member who served on our, on our founding board. So you can kind of see Lewis Webb was a well-connected man for in his, in his day and uh, brought some prominent citizens to um, this newly founded organization. This is a picture of the very first annual report. So the foundation was founded in 1953. The first annual report was published in 1954. You can sort of see the Pasadena Rose. And if you can't read the sort of slogan at the bottom, um, it, it basically says that the Pasadena Foundation was formed for effective giving for present needs unfulfilled and for future needs unforeseen. And um, so in 1954, the foundation raised $12,684 and they awarded grants of almost $10,000. And the ending balance for that year was $2,719. So if you remember, the Webbs created the foundation but they uh, pledged their estate as a future gift. So that money had not come in in 1954. But when Lewis Webb died in 1966, his half of their fortune came in at about $600,000, quite a bit of money back then. And then when Marion Webb died 12 years later, 
you know, her half of the estate had grown to 1.7 million and that came into the foundation following her death. So their combined gift was $2.3 million. We hold that fund as the Lewis and Marion Webb Endowment uh, and it's currently valued at $14.6 million. So from the time that we received the initial gift of 600,000, we have been making distributions from that money. That money is invested and we make grant distributions each year. Um, but through the power of endowment and good investing, um, the, the fund has continued to grow and continues to generate uh, money for grants in the community. So this is just kind of a quick, quick and dirty financial history of our early years. So if you recall in 1954, we had that $12,000 balance. By 1978, which was our um, 50th an 25th anniversary, our assets had grown to $4 million. That included the web gift of about $2.3 million. I joined the foundation in 2002 and we had about $15.5 million at that time. And then in 2004, um, after I'd been there a little while and about a year and figured out that, you know, our, our organizational structure was somewhat outdated and a lot of community foundations had reorganized. Um, in and, and so we proceeded to do the same. So in 2004, we had about $20 million in assets and we were structured as three separate trusts, the Pasadena Foundation Trust that the Webbs created in 1953. When Lewis Webb died, his bequest came in as the Lewis Webb Trust and Marion Webb's bequest came in upon her death as the Marion Webb Trust. So we were, we were three trusts and we were filing three tax returns. And so we merged those trusts into an, uh, one organization, we became a, um, public Benefit Corporation, and we changed our name to the Pasadena Community Foundation to sort of reflect our, both our identity as a community foundation, as well as to, I think, uh, reflect our aspirational goal to become an important institution of the community. So we, we added community to our name. And so kind of a brief history of our financials since that time. So in 2004, we had 20 million, we merged the trusts. By our 60th anniversary, we had grown uh, to over $43 million. Um, five years ago, in 2016, we were about $64 million. And in the past five years, we've almost doubled our size we ended 2020 with $129.5 million in total assets. So the question of course becomes, what do we do with all that money? What is our role and, and, and how, do we, how do we use that money? So um, of that $129 million, uh, about 78 million, you can see the bar on the, on the right, we ended the year with 2020, uh, about 62% of that money is in a collection of endowments that we call the funds for Pasadena. And that is, um, those funds are restricted by the donors who establish the funds to grant making in the local community. The other, you know, 40% of our money um, our funds that are established by donors and the grant making can go outside of the community. So they might be family foundation funds that are giving both locally and also outside of the community. They might be a scholarship fund where maybe the donor lives in Pasadena but went to um, college on the East Coast and wants to support a scholarship there. Or for a variety of reasons, you know, they're giving both locally and outside of the community. But one of our core missions as a community foundation is to build hometown legacies for our local community. And we do that primarily through these funds for Pasadena. Um, and so I'm going to pause for a moment to, um, I'm gonna share a different screen and uh, share with you just a, a brief video of some of the ways that we uh, that those funds for Pasadena 
benefited the community last year during the pandemic. And so I'm going to um, share my screen and pick a different, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble finding my, the right, uh, I have it open on my, give me one second. Just want to make sure that you are all seeing um, a young woman's face on a video. Is that what people are seeing on their screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to hit play and I'm going to share this video with you all. The first confirmed case of COVID-19 was recorded in Pasadena on March 11th, two days prior to California's statewide March 19th stay-at-home order, PCF launched our COVID-19 response fund with a $100,000 seed gift from the foundation. Within 12 days, more than $270,000 was distributed to local nonprofits. This amount will increase tenfold by the end of 2020. We realized the most vulnerable in our community would be impacted disproportionately, and it was crucial to respond quickly. We had to reconsider PCF's standard grant-making processes and approach. We reached out to two dozen civic leaders and nonprofit colleagues to assess and discuss community needs and identify gaps in existing resources. We targeted four main sectors, food insecurity, education, health, and homelessness. At the onset of COVID, food insecurity struck vulnerable populations across the spectrum. With PCF support, food pantries escalated the number they served. Union Station Homeless Services provided 75,000 meals between April and August to at-risk individuals and families. Meals on Wheels doubled deliveries to housebound seniors. End Lawn, the National Day Labor Organizing Network, started a donation-based food distribution program. PCF was instrumental in helping this program become more sustainable by supporting End Lawn's application to become an LA Regional Food Bank partner at their Pasadena Job Center site. Obviously, when we uh, take a look at the need, we understand that it's vastly greater than the resources available. So we asked the Pasadena Foundation to guide us in the process of becoming an affiliate of the Los Angeles uh, Regional Food Bank. PCF has been the most important part of all of this because first, you know, with their grant, we were able to purchase our beautiful fridge and we were able to purchase the work for the, having the sink and we have the shelves in the back and we were able to uh, set the room, fix the room, paint it and everything was done with the grant from the PCF. For years, PCF has partnered with organizations whose mission is to help close the achievement gap for students in grades K through 12. With sudden school closures, our partners were challenged to connect remotely with their students. PCF's annual funding of $120,000 enabled them to adapt. In 2019, the PCF Scholars Fund was launched to assist local high school graduates who enroll at Pasadena City College. This program provides financial assistance and guidance and helps students succeed academically and was especially vital when COVID hit. We had to transition into online learning because of the pandemic. I didn't know what to expect from it. I have never taken online classes in my life. I took stats last spring, which is not my strongest subject, the PCF Foundation helped me get a tutor, which was very helpful. I'm thankful that the program has given me opportunities to continue my uh, studies in college. And so far they've helped me with getting a computer because I really needed that. 
and they've also helped me with the vouchers that I could use to buy my books online and stuff and other materials for my classes. Hi everyone, my name is Miley Celio and this is my second year being a part of the PCS College program. As a first generation college student, this program has really helped me navigate my way through my college experience in the best way possible. I believe that the main thing that college students need is to have a support system and that's what this program is truly all about. The onset of a novel virus pandemic necessitated an urgent healthcare response. PUSD provided daily grab-and-go meals to students, but protecting on-site volunteers was also essential. PCF funded materials to produce thousands of face shields for workers via 3D printing. Financial support was given to the Huntington Hospital and to institutions with special populations Elderly and senior care facilities, kids in group homes, adults in recovery, all had challenges to keep both residents and staff safe. Caregiving by video became invaluable. PCFs also supported Planned Parenthood's pivot to telehealth, which increased 700% in the first week. Homelessness is one of the greatest challenges facing California with over 151,000 people, families, and children living on the streets. Creating a balanced housing supply to prevent and address homelessness is critical. That's why PCF is excited to partner with two organizations on permanent supportive housing projects right here in Pasadena. The San Gabriel Valley Habitat for Humanity took an innovative approach to construct an accessory dwelling unit a pilot project that if scaled could become a national model for more affordable housing. PCF's grant to the Salvation Army supports the construction of Hope Center, a mixed-use building that includes an expanded food bank and also housing for 64 men, including 16 veterans. When people hear of Pasadena, they think of the Rose Parade, the Rose Bowl, JPL, or Caltech. They think of affluence, but in our community there are pockets of uh, areas where people struggle. So it's incumbent upon organizations like the Salvation Army and many others to try and put a dent into this problem of homelessness. I was born and raised in Southern Africa, and in Africa we have a saying that if you want to go somewhere, go by yourself. But if you want to go far, go with others, and the support we received from Pasadena committed foundation is such support that is going to help us go far in our help of our community. PCF helped nonprofits increase their capacity to provide assistance to organizations helping to address the needs that emerged during the pandemic. By the end of 2020, PCF will have provided nearly three million dollars in relief to local organizations. Several factors have made this possible. Income from our 130 endowment builder funds provide a critical source of sustainable support for local grant making. Grant reserves and strong investment performance were also key. Additional support came from donations to our COVID-19 disaster response fund and small business relief grants made possible by our partnership with the city of Pasadena. Philanthropy is part of Pasadena's DNA. This spirit of engagement enabled PCF to very quickly provide critical aid on multiple fronts at a time when it was most needed. Every donor can be proud of their part in mitigating the devastating impact of COVID-19 on our community. So I'm gonna go back to uh, my presentation. So are you seeing the um, PCF areas of interest slide? Just want to make sure the screen sharing is working. Yes, it's working. Right. Yes. Um, so last year, you got the video showed you, um, you know, our focus of our grant making was really on vulnerable populations. 
um, because that was really the highest need at that time. In, in normal years, we have a broader grant making profile. We, we fund in all of these areas that are listed here, everything from arts and culture and environment and so forth. Um, so while we have really usually quite broad programmatic grant making, we are quite focused when it comes to geography. So we focus on the, the greater Pasadena community. So how are these, uh, how, is this, how is this grant money uh, funded? How, you know, where do we get this money? We get it through donors who set up establish and establish charitable funds at the foundation to support the community. Um, there's different ways that we do that. This is an example, our endowment builders program is an example of people who establish charitable endowments to support the community. Um, and these funds get invested and generate uh, income for our grants. So we have about 130 endowment builders. Um, these are two board members who have created endowments with us. One of the things that you can see is that our board has become a little more diverse than the founding board of 1954. <laughs> um, on the left, on my left anyway, is Sonia Singla and her husband, Neil. They created an unrestricted endowment that allows um, us to make grants in any of the areas, any of our areas of interest. Uh, Ray and Eddie Newman. Eddie was uh, on our board for 10 years and she was an educator her entire career. She was the principal of Muir High School. Um, and so they created a, an endowment that's restricted to education. So all of the money that is generated from their endowment has to go toward our educational grants. And so these endowments can be established. Uh, a named endowment can be established with $10,000 or more. Sometimes people will start them, build them over time, over several years. Some people will continue to add to them. And these endowments get, get pooled um, to generate the grants for the community. Another way that we um, create endowments is sometimes to honor a special occasion. So when Bobby Samuels turned 13 and had his bar mitzvah, his family, it was a, it was a rather large affair, and his family asked that rather than gifts to Bobby, that donations be made to the mitzvah endowment at the Pasadena Community Foundation. And so this endowment uh, was restricted to supporting after-school programs for at-risk youth within PUSD. And here you can see Bobby at age 13. Here's Bobby in his 20s. And, and today Bobby is um, almost 30 and he's engaged to be married. And he can be really proud of this legacy that he has um, created for his, for his community to help other, other kids less fortunate than he was. We sometimes create funds to honor somebody that we love who's passed away through a memorial fund. So when Nancy Nash Beckham died and left some money to her two daughters, um, they each put in $5,000 to create this endowment to pay tribute to their mother. Uh, that fund is now valued at over $90,000 because through the years, the sisters and family members have continued to make small contributions for a Christmas or for um, Mother's Day or for a birthday. People make small contributions to honor them or an occasion. And so the fund through the power of investment as well as additional contributions has grown. And so I'm gonna just um, quickly share uh, another Oops. Sorry. Sometimes you think you're there we go. Hello, my name is Patty Beckham Healy, and I'm honored to be here today at Friends Indeed in Pasadena to talk a little bit about a legacy that my sister and I set up to honor our mother. 
uh, in 2008, we looked at each other and said, we really want to do something lasting to honor mom and her passion for how strongly she, be she believed in the city of Pasadena and also in helping the homeless and the hungry. And out of that idea came the Nancy Nash Beckham Fund for Hunger. My name is Barbara Beckham. I was um, so pleased to uh, meet with my personal trust attorney, Gloria Pitzer. And Gloria um, had a wonderful suggestion um, of working with the Pasadena Community Foundation. We've been absolutely delighted with the work that the foundation continues to do, and Jennifer and her fabulous staff keep us updated on uh, the growth of the fund and the grants that have been able to be given out in the past six years. And it's just been a delightful relationship and we're so grateful. I am Tim. I am the uh, program director for the food pantry. This freezer right here was um, replaced with a freezer that we were, that we were actually uh, renting. And through the, a grant from the Pasadena Community Foundation, we were able to buy this brand new freezer and not turn away any meat or protein uh, when we get it through donations or purchase or whatever. For many, many years, I think it's probably about 18 years ago, my mother and I came to Friends Indeed, where we are today, um, and uh, would regularly bring donated food that we had picked up from grocery stores around Pasadena who had extra supplies and brought them to Friends Indeed. So she had a particular uh, relationship with this organization. Thanksgiving, we had the opportunity to receive a donation of 35 cases of pork loin. And when they called me, I was thinking it was going to be the pork loin that's about the size of the pork tenderloin at Trader Joe's, so a pound, pound and a half. When they got here, they were 35 cases of 10 to 12 pound pork loins. If I had only had two freezers, there's no way I would have been able to put all of that meat here uh, for storage and distribution. So getting that third freezer was, was huge. I don't think I'll ever have to turn anything away. Jennifer and the foundation understood what the passion was that we wanted to continue and honor for our mother. And they develop and are more aware of the organizations uh, in Pasadena that can benefit the most. One of the things that I, my sister and I have been so delighted about and that I know would mean so much to my mom is that the next generation is now involved. Um, my daughter on my birthday will make a donation in my mom's honor, which is just such a loving, lasting legacy because my daughter knows that that's what means the most to me. And I know mom, you know, from above is looking down and saying, job well done. I think that's <laughs> right. So um, we were talking about ways that funds get developed with individuals for special occasions to honor a loved one. Uh, we sometimes work with organizations to establish funds. So the Pasadena Public Library Foundation was an organization that was established in 1954 to raise funds for the central branch of the library to, um, to pay for some much needed and deferred maintenance on the building. And so they had some very lavish and big fundraising parties at the library in the 80s. And um, then, you know, some of the people who were very involved in that um, got older, some of them passed away, some of them moved away, some of them just became less active. And so they decided in 2011 to transfer these funds to the Pasadena Community Foundation. So we took over the investment, uh, we handle annual fundraising for the fund. And we also um, work with a small group of people and the library director to identify projects that need funding and support. And so these are two projects that we have funded in recent years, the, the, the renovation of the facade on the walnut facing side of the library. 
and also the refurbishment of these um, chairs in the Donald uh, Wright Auditorium at the library. They're these beautiful, fantastic sort of antique chairs, um, greatly in need of refurbishment. There were sort of sp springs popping up through the upholstery and the, the wood on the arms was getting a sort of, um, you know, needed refinishing and so forth. And so I guess one of the blessings of COVID, if you're trying to look for silver lining, is that the library's closed. And so they were um, able to take all the chairs out of the Donald Wright Auditorium and have them you know, refinished and reupholstered and brought back in. And now we hope that the libraries will soon open so that we can all use these lovely chairs. Um, another organization that we work with, um, there's a group of African-American women who are part of uh, the Lynx, um, and they created the Pasadena Altadena Community Endowment Fund as a nonprofit to support their scholarships that they do um, for young children, um, young youth who want to attend college. And so they seeded their fund in 2004 with $20,000. They've been um, adding to it ever since. Pasadena Community Foundation handles the investment um, and makes distributions back to this group for their, for their grant making. We also worked with the San Marino Women's Club when they sold their building uh, to the city of San Marino. They took a million dollars of the proceeds and created a charitable fund. Um, we have invested the, that money. They have been making, they, the women of the San Marino Women's Club stay involved in the grant making. They get to decide where the grants go. And we have been making grants um, on their behalf, directed by them for all those years since, since 2006. And the fund has still grown to a value of about $1.9 million. So each year they have a little bit more money to give away to charity. We also work with groups that want to um, sort of do active fundraising. Um, this fund, the Yes Virginia Fund, was um, established in 1993. And a group of women got together and wanted to raise funds to help children during the holidays. Um, so they raised money and, and gave most of it away, saved a little bit. When I joined the foundation, um, I suggested that they should perhaps endow what they had saved so that it would um, grow and build over time. And so eventually that's what happened. They sort of spent half of what they raised and saved half of what they raised. And we created a goal of reaching a $500,000 endowment so that the fund would be self-sustaining uh, without fundraising. And fortunately for us, we reached that goal in 2019 we would not have been able to have our annual fundraising event in 2020, but we didn't plan to because we had already reached our goal. And so the fund has actually given away over $340,000 to local organizations that serve low-income families and um, have holiday parties for the kids and give away gifts at, during the Christmas time. Um, and the fund is now self-sustaining, generating $15,000 every year annually from the endowment you know, without any fundraising at all. And finally, we create funds um, often through bequests when people pass on. So Cornelia Eaton, when she died, she left a bequest of about $951,000 to uh, be used to support organizations in Pasadena serving seniors. Since that time, the fund has distributed over $956,000 in grants to benefit seniors. So we have given away more than the original gift that we received. And the fund is now valued at over $2 million. So we have made distributions to organizations such as the Pasadena Senior Center, Meals on Wheels, Senior Care Network, and many more. Um, and this endowment is still generating uh, significant money each year for our senior grants program. We have other individuals who are still living, but who have who plan to leave a future bequest, as the Webs did. They left a future gift to the foundation. So Sandra Chateau, her passion is um, dogs and music, and so when she passes on, there's a charitable component of her estate that will create two endowments, one named for her dog, Tiger Lily, that will support organizations that. Um, 
such as you know canine units at police departments or um, Pasty Humane or just a variety of, of uh, organizations. And then she also was very passionate about music. And so there will be a fund for that as well. Uh, Jolly Erner, a lifelong teacher and ultimately head of school. Um, she has an estate plan that has all of her money will go to charity. She has no children of her own. She has named three organizations um, that she cares deeply about. Uh, and then she has, as a fourth organization, has named the Community Foundation. And with our share of her bequest, we will create an endowment for children living in poverty in Pasadena. So you can see that um, the way that these areas of interest get funded are that donors in the community have passions about a particular area, or they're just, and they can, they can restrict their endowment to that area, to that passion, or they can leave an unrestricted gift for the community. But um, this is really how we fund our grant making. And um, just a couple quick examples of some recent grants that we have made from these various funds from Pasadena in recent years. So in arts and culture, we have funded uh, both performing arts and visual arts, music, dance. In youth and education, we've funded everything from early literacy to college access work. Uh, we've been funded some local environmental organizations in the health and safety area. We've been a longtime funder of the Rose Bowls um, program to reach out to all PUSD third graders to make them pool safe, swimming lessons for third graders. Um, Young and Healthy has been a recipient. In the area we, um, in the area we have funded not guys, my phone is turn off. <laughs> In the area of human services, we've funded, as you saw, friends indeed, food pantries, seniors, and also organizations serving those with disabilities. And of course, during um, the COVID pandemic, we created a COVID response fund, raised additional money for COVID response, and also um, have funded some affordable housing projects in the community doing that work. And then you heard a little bit about PCF scholars in, their, in our video. We run a scholarship program for PUSD kids who are enrolled at Pasadena City College. We started this in 2019 with eight scholars. In the next school year, beginning in the fall, we will be supporting 28 scholars. Um, and the goal is to sustain this program at about 30 scholars a year. Every year we will support students up to four years. So um, as, as a cohort, you know, graduates and goes on to a job or to college or wherever they're going to go, a new cohort will come in and get support. So that is the work that we do in the community. Um, so happy to be able to share some of our history and some of our current work with all of you and happy to answer any questions uh, if people have any about the Community Foundation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. What a fabulous presentation to um, show us the videos, to make us feel like we're actually part of the people that are donating to the Pasadena Community Foundation and to see your past work and your current work. It's absolutely overwhelming in all those different entities in Pasadena that you have helped. Um, it's a huge impact for our community. I mean, You've helped um, food, education, healthcare, homelessness, just to name a few, absolutely. And it was particularly fun to see the DRW Auditorium because every Wednesday afternoon when we were open, and we do look forward to being in that position again um, in the future, that we will be able to have our Wednesday films that we host for the community and a lot of senior centers, senior citizens come. Um, and so it's very nice to see those beautiful new chairs. And they came from the Pasadena Civic Auditorium and you see the um, city of Pasadena rose the emblem on the side of it. And then if you look carefully at 
the chairs, you can see a little rack underneath them, and that's where a gentleman would have put his hat. So um, they're very significant to Pasadena, and to have them in the library is wonderful. So um, I'm sure we have some chat questions. Um, they're actually everybody saying you've really made a difference during COVID for so many in need. Um, you just started off immediately right there. It's been a very busy year for you, I'm sure. It has. And um, I think that uh, while we did start um, really very quickly and we were proud of our, our very sort of strong early response, you know, there is still great need in the community. We're focusing right now on vaccines um, and trying to fund different collaborations um, to get vaccines to harder to reach uh, populations who may not have access to the technology to register for appointments or transportation to get to some of the mass distribution sites. So that's a big part of our work right now is, is vaccines. But we certainly hope to get back to a broader funding of the arts and the environment and all the things that we miss uh, during the pandemic um, soon. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure you will. And as you said, what was announced today was your partnership with Planned Parenthood for the vaccine for um, make it available to everybody in the community. And we do have a question about how do students apply for the scholar program? So um, for the PCF scholars, we are working closely with um, a group called College Access Plan. They are a nonprofit in Pasadena that be before the pandemic, they were on every high school campus. They were a drop-in college counseling center that was free to all students. And um, they are still working at the colleges, you know, at the high school campuses remotely. So we work with them to get the word out and um, and make sure that kids know how to apply. And there's a selection committee that has been um, organized by them. So if you're interested in PCF scholars, um, can certainly email the foundation, but also can get in touch with College Access Plan, which has a tremendous program to help kids uh, apply to college and go through the financial aid forms and all of the very complicated paperwork it takes today to get into college. <laughs> so. Yes, lots and lots of paperwork. So that is a, a big assistance to, to the students, and I'm sure it helps ease their mind. Yeah. So, um, people that want to participate in any of your different um, endowments. Um, is, is there an, a minimum amount? You did talk about $10,000, but then you said that people could um, start slowly and then build it up. Sure, so we have, um, to create a named endowment, it is a $10,000 minimum. We've had people that have been doing that with you know $1,000 a year and they're just, planning to take a long time to do it. We have people that do it in you know, two tranches. We have people like the sisters who each gave 5,000. Um, and then we also, for people who, who you know, maybe don't want a named endowment of their own, we have field of interest endowments that people can just make a donation to. So we have endowments, an endowment for the arts, for education. So if you're just passionate about a particular area, you can contribute any amount of money to that area of interest. And we have sort of a general fund endowment for each of those areas that will help with our grants in, in those areas in the community. Fabulous. Um, can you contribute to any of the funds? I mean, you just select which one you want to do. You can contribute to any fund that we hold at the foundation. You can contribute to somebody else's fund. You can contribute to your fund. You can contribute to the library foundation fund that we hold. Any of our funds can accept a donation. Oh, good. Yes, I know. I've seen your library uh, request to donate to the Library Foundation Fund. Yep. That way. Um, so your work is just fabulous. And of course, everybody that's attending today, you know, we're recording this and we're going to be putting it on the Pasadena Public Library YouTube channel so that other people in the community, when they scroll through our channel, can see all the different things that the Pasadena Community Foundation is doing. I know you do a very uh, detailed annual report as well that helps people in the community that aren't aware of everything that you're doing. 
course, this year, I think more than ever, uh, Pasadena Community Foundation is right out in the forefront of helping everything. Um, we, also just, we also just want to be a resource in the community. So we often get calls from people who say, um, I actually got a call today from someone who wanted to know, you know, what are the organizations working in the area of domestic violence and sexual assault? I was able to provide some referrals. Some people say, you know, who are the food pantries in town? Who's doing a good job? Um, so sometimes we're just we're just a resource center like the library is for kind of the nonprofit uh, information in the city, um, just connecting, you know, donors to organizations that they may want to get to know a little better. Um, so we're happy to just, you know, be a resource for the community. Well, you've actually been a resource for me planning this um, program for One City, One Story 2021. So if you remember, I called you and I was looking for uh, community nonprofits to partner with me on the career path opportunities. And you recommended that I contact Dr. McKellar Ron with Charter Learning Work School here in Pasadena. So um, you were a resource to me and I'm very, very appreciative of that. So, um, you are definitely a resource to everyone. And I'm glad that everybody thinks about that. Um, so um, another question is, could you talk about any grants that you give out for music or creative arts? So most of our um, grant making in the arts area is to, is to nonprofit organizations. We don't do individual scholarship in the arts area. Um, but we do support, for example, the Pasadena Conservatory of Music, which has, you know, music education and um, they have scholarships for that. We support, um, we have a fund called the Geeson Trust and that um, organization funds about five different organizations in Pasadena that focuses on children, um, visual arts education for children. So. The Armory is a grantee, Wisdom Arts Lab is a grantee, Art Center College has some programs that are funded. Um, the Passing Educational Foundation has some uh, different arts programs in the schools that are a, that are a grantee. Um, so we, we do a lot of funding in the arts. We have funded local theaters with different sort of capital equipment needs. We bought a soundboard for the Passing Playhouse and we bought lighting for a noise within and um, music stands for the symphony. So uh, we, have, we have done a lot of funding to organization, arts organizations. I would say you're just all over town. Everybody needs to give Passing the Community Foundation a big round of applause. I don't think um, everybody could get everything done without your wonderful support and the generosity, as you said, of all the Pasadenans That's that, right. that are really um, interested in having their community thrive in wonderful ways. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity today to share a little bit about our organization. It's been a real well, honor. I thank you very much, Jennifer. It was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. It gave us a wonderful glimpse into all the work of the Pasadena Community Foundation. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody. Good evening. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.